other sometimes I miss my starting spiel, so I'll, I'll wait until the published YouTube broadcast goes to 100%. There we go, it's just gone, and we're live. Okay, so, uh, this is where we are, right, we're week five, and I think I've been saying before, um, the stuff on that list, let me just get a, a draw menu, right, and go green. The stuff on this list, I'm not going to necessarily follow um, this order. In fact, even down, all the way down to here, right? Um, I'm not necessarily going to um, uh, follow this order at all. Right, we've already been talking about adders and arithmetic circuits, for example. Um, so, uh, it, the the main thing is this is a checklist of stuff that we need to get through. Okay, uh, and that's the the line we're on today. So week five. Today we're going to continue with the um, the full adder and the full bit adder and look at uh, testing it in a bit more detail today. And I know some of you have already had a go at it, um, but uh, we'll, we'll spend some time later in today's lecture to go through with that. Um, you'll be happy to know, I hope, that the midterm exam has been released. And um, this is the problem I'm asking you to design a circuit for. Okay, design a circuit to implement the following counting sequence. The circuit is to be made, uh, to be driven by an external clock. The counter must not made, make any transitions not indicated in table one. Once the counter reaches the bottom, the counting continues again from the top, right? So what, what, I'm, what I haven't given you are the values of A, B, C, D, all the way down to S, right? Um, an example of the sequence might be, right, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, one one zero zero one zero zero one zero zero and then it cycles all the way back to here again um, the question i've asked is completely generic right because i haven't given you those values for a through s um, so I need you to understand how to solve these problems generically, and I want you to explain how you're going to solve it generically. So there's the first part of the question. This is building up to solving the, the question. I, need to, I want you to explain to me what a, what a, a flip-flop excitation table is. I want you to give me a particular one, the, the one for a JK flip-flop. I want you to uh, tell me what the present state next state table is for the counter that we just looked at, the, the table one. And I want you to explain how you're going to use those that table of present states and next states in order to design uh, the, uh, the logic to control the circuit. Right, and remember there's, there's two possible approaches to this. The, the, the more approach or the merely approach. Right? One of them is you force the, uh, the states to change precisely the way the, um, uh, the table tells you. 
and the other one is to just design a counter that counts through the number of states that you need and then uh, devise output logic that gives you the, the, the numbers in the table. All right, there's two perfectly valid um, ways to approach it. Sometimes designing a counter is, is much easier. Maybe you can just buy that, uh, a chip like that or you already have a VHDL um, component that does that. And then the, the, the problem just becomes designing the output logic or maybe um, you want to do it the other way. Like I said, design the, the transitions into um, uh, making, in, ensuring that those, those bits go in that direction or in that sequence rather. Um, then I suppose a pretty simple question is how many flip-flops are required to implement the counter? Then I want you to explain to me what a Kano map is and how to use it. I want you to explain how your design works. Um, and then I want you to give me the VHDL entity definition that would implement the counter. And I want you to explain how to implement the architecture section. Um, of this VHDL component. I don't want you to write down the um, the VHDL. I just want you to explain to me orally what's going to happen. Okay, and then once we're done with that, that that's all going to happen. Um, <clears throat> well, we can do it on, on Discord. Um, I would like to record all of these so that we can go back over them and... Uh, check to in case uh, well I, I like going back over them just to make sure I'm consistent in, in what I say about uh, say to everybody because um, I want you to I want to be as fair as I can about um, oral exams any any assessment um, but with oral exams specifically um, because they it's a midterm or a final um, but once once we're done with that oral component I'm going to give you some uh, numbers for A through S, either 0 or 1 for all of them. And then I'm going to actually ask you to do a, uh, a the design. Um, what that, uh, the whole uh, oral plus upload exam uh, will take a total of two hours. Um, I find, I am not haven't timed this particular one, but I find the average time we spend in an oral exam um, is about 15 minutes. So um, that means you'll probably have on average about an hour and 45 minutes to, uh, to complete the, um, the design and upload your design. Um, I will see. I may actually push that out a bit, um, but at the moment, it's the the timer is set for two hours. So when you're doing booking your oral, make sure you have a time uh, a two hour time block, just so that you can make full use of that available time. Does anybody have any questions about the uh, the midterm? Going to take a swig of coffee. Probably should have Discord up. There we go. Then I don't have to slurp in your ears if I can mute myself. Um, yeah, Tommy, um, it, it really varies um, from student to student how long that um, uh, the oral section takes. Sometimes, um, like some of the, uh, the 236 exams that I did, um, it took, some students were just, just went bang, 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 and it was 
the oral component was over in five minutes and some students um, made mistakes and realized they'd made mistakes and we had to circle back through the, the exam um, and uh, the, some of them took um, you know half an hour um, so it, it all depends on exactly how you you prepare um, this one I've done a little differently because um, with previous ones I, I instead of um, instead of having a generic problem like like this one um, what I did is I gave there were several th things I needed to t um, if you remember uh, circuit analysis you know there's um, nodal analysis there's uh, um, mesh analysis there's superposition those sorts of things and for each of those topics I had three or four specific circuits um, that I asked people about and then um, uh, this one I think it's generic enough that it uh, I just need the effectively the one question or one series of questions about the one circuit or about the one uh, problem does that answer the question um, it, I so in general I'm I'm not a um, a big fan of of timed exams um, I'm a fan of timely exams but <clears throat> you know whether it takes you two hours or two and a half hours generally doesn't bother me so that's why I might I might bump up the the time um, a little bit um, so we'll we'll see how it goes um, I'll what I'll if if you're one of the first people um, to to take the oral exam then uh, I I you will be a, a little bit of a guinea pig um, I I've only taught uh, 466 once before and uh, I didn't do the exam those exams orally in fact I did I think way too many exams I think I did three midterms and uh, a final um, so uh, yeah I'm going to um, just go with I think I forgot did I I forgot did, what did I say I was going to do this time did I uh, put the syllabus here I don't think I put the syllabus up in um, one note but yeah I think I'm uh, I'm going to uh, reduce the number of um, midterms but based compared with what I did last time okay any other questions um, just so you know I am not going to go through a um, uh, a, uh, a solution to the midterm before the midterm <laughs> um, you have the paper um, these aren't the only questions I'm going to ask they're, they're starter questions um, I do reserve the right to ask any question about the topics that are on the exam um, particularly if you say something that is ambiguous or needs explanation um, I will ask you to explain in a bit more detail or I will um, ask you more questions having said that um, I find the students that do the best um, are when I say the least right if the if the student knows their stuff I don't have to say anything I just well I, I, I ask each question right um, but if you've explained it to my satisfaction and there's there's nothing that I need to dig at we'll just move on okay so um, it, it depends um, okay any other questions um, please I, I have noticed several people have already booked their uh, their midterm session so they are the the slots are filling up um, so please uh, go to the link and uh, book 
a, a CET 466 midterm time that suits you. Um, the actual oral component, as I said, will only be, um, my guess is about 15 minutes, um, but uh, you will need a, a time slot for yourself of up to up to two hours. Um, again, I may change that, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, so make sure you give yourself plenty of time to do the upload component of the question. Um, some people uh, don't like the idea that I um, release the exam publicly before the exam. Um, those people are usually faculty. Uh, I know this is going to sound very strange, but I find it doesn't matter. I haven't seen a significant difference between the grades that I get on a standard written invigilated midterm versus an oral midterm. Um, I think it's a a valid way to assess what students know um, and I've generally had good feedback from the students even though some of them didn't do so well um, part of it is uh, it's about being honest right if it's just me talking to one student um, there's no room to hide is in this class, right? We've got however many people we've got in the class. Um, there's uh, there's plenty of room to hide. I mean, even in a standard classroom, there's plenty of room to hide. Um, but when it's just one on one, um, and uh, I find I get I I understand each individual student's um, foibles a little better if I do it this way rather than the standard way. I can sort of get an idea from the written work, but um, yeah, doing it this way, I think, uh, is is an improvement. Okay, let's leave it there. Um, so, um, I wasn't quite sure what to do next, and what I thought I'd do is just have yet another look at the, the test bench, this test bench for, for lab three. And um, then dive into the other slides about uh, VHDL. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I, I've uploaded um, these VH, excuse me, these VHDL notes and I've already talked to some of the slides in, in earlier lectures, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and tick off the slides that we've talked to, and I will keep revisiting these VHDL notes um, just to make sure we go through everything. Um, but So let me just, before I talk about this specifically, right, um, Remember what, what I was, let me draw it down here, right? So there's a few, there's basically three steps, right? Um, well, maybe four, right? So the first step is the design, right? We, we do the design, we do the paper design, let's call it paper design, right? We've got the problem whether it's a, a half adder or a full adder or a four bit adder. And so we do some, some doodling to figure out what the solution is. Then we uh, do some VHDL implementation. Okay, and then what I'm suggesting you do is you write a test bench. 
and that's the part that uh, we're doing for the first time in, uh, it's actually in lab four, but um, uh, I, I wrote this one for lab three, just as an example. And then the idea is, once we've written that test bench, and it, the, the code that we wrote passes all the tests, then we can feel confident that we can deploy um, to the FPGA. Okay, and just a reminder, I do need you to answer the, uh, the quiz about um, FPGAs. Uh, sorry, about Quartus installation, about model sim installation, and about Cyclone 4 device support installation. Okay, and what we're going to do after Lab 4 is I'm going to team you up. One person in the team will have access to um, the board. And just to remember, where's my uh, Streamlabs? And I'll go to bigger me so you can see me a bit better, right? So that's the board. It's probably back to front. Is it back to front? I think my, my video might be switched. Okay, but I've already handed out, uh, I think at least six of these. I need to hand out another six. So um, I do not want teams of more than, uh, more than um, three if I can avoid it. So please uh, uh, let me know. And uh, if I've emailed you about it, um, please schedule with me um, to pick it up. I, I have to travel um, from where I live in West Hartford down to um, Fairfield University in Fairfield, funnily enough. Um, and uh, on a not quite daily basis. I have to go there on uh, Mondays, Tuesdays and Fridays. So I can cover most of the state, provided I get enough notice. Um, I'm happy to come to campus. Um, I've already delivered several uh, boards to campus and just met up with people in one of the car parks on campus. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, let's get that organized so that we can uh, move forward with the labs, the, the later labs, not yet. Um, got a couple of weeks yet. Uh, I am perfectly happy, Justin, for um, uh, people to form their own teams. The only proviso I have is that one member of the team has the board. You won't be able to do the labs completely without having somebody um, have the, the board. Um, I'm not saying you need to be together to do the labs. I'm just saying that one person needs to take the responsibility of uh, being able to compile and download the team members designs um, to the board and it will be the team's design um, but you need to make sure that uh, uh, the person with the board um, knows that they're, they're responsible for, for, for getting the board to run. Does that answer the question Justin? I'm not going to, I'm not going to assign people randomly. I, um, I can see reasons for doing that sometimes. Um, but, uh, for this case, I, um, and given the, the whole situation, I'd rather people feel comfortable with the, uh, the team members they're working with. Okay. So, I haven't really touched much on the paper design. I talked a little bit about it um, in uh, with the uh, the state machine design that I talked about in an earlier lecture. 
but I am assuming you already know this pretty much from CET 363, right? Um, I'm sort of probing it a bit, um, what, what you should have learned in 363 and when, when I'm asking you about uh, what a JK flip-flop does, what a Kano map does and how to use it. Um, but uh, most of the design stuff, Boolean algebra, logic minimization using Kano maps, that sort of thing, you should have learnt in uh, CET 363. I realise some of you, maybe that was a while ago, but uh, there should you should um, have enough in what I've talked about in this course. So the, the piece we, we really, it, it's going to take a while to get through, is uh, the VHDL implementation. And I was talking to a couple of students about what they're doing with the Lab 4. And there's some stuff that I haven't talked about that makes Lab 4 a little easier. Um, and... Uh, that's going to continue. I, there's lots of stuff that we need to talk about in VHDL implementation. That um, And that's partly why I, I made available all of those VHDL notes right there. I think I popped them into um, uh, the, the Discord uh, channel. I um, haven't uploaded them to Blackboard yet. Let me just make a note of that so that I remember to... Uh, upload notes to Blackboard. So this is uh, CET 466 and it's 9.26 and upload um, today's notes. Okay. It's really funny. I um, there must be something bizarre about the wiring of my brain. I find um, if I write it down, I'll remember it and not have to have it written down. But if I don't write it down, I don't remember it. So somehow, though, going from here through my writing um, helps me remember. the The only downside of that is. Um, these days, I have so much that I have to remember that uh, I get a bit of a stack overflow, so having it written down helps. I could write it down electronically, but I, I don't find I remember it as well. Um, so anyway, it's a bit odd. So the piece I just wanted to talk about now is this writing the test bench. And remember, a test bench is VHDL. It, it's no different from the VHDL implementation in terms of the, the code we're going to write, um, it's just got a different purpose, right? The, the VHDL implementation is aimed at implementing the design, whereas the test bench is aimed at testing the design. So here's our, here's the example test bench, and you'll remember that uh, I'm suggesting you use the IEEE library and I don't think I've gone through what's in the IEEE library and I don't know whether I've got hmm that's a good question I'll have to check um, in the VHDL notes whether there's details about the uh, about the library. Um, but the, the nice thing is that uh, this stdit logic type is, uh, does things a bit, excuse me, I'm getting a bit of a frog in my throat. Let me just mute and take a swig of coffee. Yeah, so the, the, the IEEE um, library gives us the stdit logic 
standard logic um, uh, type and uh, it, it does some nice things right so that's the the first bit the library is included by the library statement and then we can put pull out a particular part of the library by using this dot notation. Um, then just like any other uh, VHDL, we have an entity statement. The difference with this entity statement is there's nothing here, right? Norm with a normal entity statement, if you recall, we have a port statement that says um, what the inputs and what the outputs are, like this port statement over here. Okay. Um, the reason we don't have any inputs and any outputs is because this thing should be completely self-contained. It should be generating um, uh, any clocks internally. It should be uh, uh, generating any external stimuli internally so uh, yeah that's why we don't do it then we have the uh, well the most of the rest of the the test bench is the architecture and again we use um, we, we have to say that it's of this entity type up here right that's where that comes from in a in a, a VHDL file, you nearly always have an entity and then the associated architecture. The architecture needs a different name. I tend to use the underscore arch suffix at the end of the the name, so that it it's um, it's clear it's an architecture. That may not be necessary. So one thing we haven't talked about, um, so remember the, the test bench, there's a, a test bench template writer within Quartus that would that spits out most of this. In fact, I only wrote, I think if we go through the, uh, the detail, I think the only pieces of this code that I wrote um, starts at, the, uh, at that assert there right and ends at that assert there that's the only part of this um, uh, test bench that I wrote the rest was all auto generated out of quarters so one thing I haven't talked about is it's possible to define constants within VHDL. And I believe those constants are actually called generics. Now I don't know whether I can actually search here. No, I can't. So let me just uh, open up. That and search there. Okay, so this is on page 44. That could be bad. How many are there? There's 95, so they've got to be about... Oh, we've done those. So they've got to be about halfway. So if you've got the uh, the PDF out separately, it's on page forty four of the um, of the notes. Uh, where are we going? Concurrency. There we go. Right. Let's just zoom in on that. Zoom a bit more. 
right? So just with like with any programming language, um, it's usually a good idea to not write numbers all the way through, right? Um, when you see lots of threes, the question should arise, do they all mean the same thing? When you see lots of eights, the question should arise, do they all mean the same thing? Why is it eight? Why is it three? And the, the general advice with usual programming is you define a constant, right? And uh, that way you can write uh, an explicit name, right? So maybe um, we can define a constant, right, uh, called, um, uh, let's call it data width. And maybe we can define another constant called address width. And these will be the number of bits in the data and the number of bits in the address. And it's possible for a small device for both of those to be eight. However, we can't tell just looking at the number eight which one it is. Is it a data width or an address width? So the aim is to um, uh, to to use the name to find the name to be equal to eight once, and then use the logical name rather than the the, the hard coded um, magic number. Right and. That's, that's the example, the width of the bus. Maybe you want to have a, a, const, a, a known delay, um, maybe for loop counters, right? If you want to count through, you know, one through 10, you don't want to write 10 as the, the length of the loop. You want to make that a, a, a constant. Okay, so there's two ways to do this. One is with generics and one is with constants. So let's have a look. Right. Generics are declared in the entity, right? So in our, um, in our uh, thing here, uh, where did my draw menu go? There we go, right? In our thing here, our um, our generics would be defined in here. Okay. Um, the design can be compiled without in initialization. Um, it's a global variable which can be def altered at runtime, right? You can't alter it while it's running, but you can uh, alter it as it runs. And it's visible to all architectures below the entity description. Right, and here's the syntax, generic, the name of the generic, the type of the generic, and the initial value. Right, and so here's an example. We have a generic, which is called width. It's an integer, and its value is seven. Okay, and here's another thing that might be useful for the full bit adder. Right, we've used stdit logic before, but now we can use a logic vector, and the way you define a an eight bit
bit uh, logic vector is to say stdt logic vector 7 down to 0 right so in this case they've decided that they may want to change the data width or the, the vector width so they've made the vector width um, 7 um, it's a good idea anyway because here's another one and I'm assuming that we want both of these uh, the in one and out one stdt logic vectors to be the same width so using a generic in this way will will make that possible okay so that's one way to do it let's see what else they've got to say Right, so the next one is um, declaring a constant and this time the constants are declared in the architecture. Right, so let me just redraw this. So the, the generics are done up here and the constants are done here okay so it's declared in the architecture has to be initialized it's only visible inside the architecture right you can't use it outside the architecture it's format is almost exactly the same as the generic except the keyword we use is constant rather than generic and whereas the generic previously uh, the the initial value was optional now we have to define that initial value right and here's an example of um, uh, using a constant within an architecture and this time they've decided to define a, a delay of one nanosecond right? and so we've been writing things like this right? But what this one is doing is it's saying, okay, I'm going to do that output. I'm going to complement in one and I'm going to output it to out one, but I'm going to wait um, one nanosecond between um, uh, while doing that. So there's a one nanosecond delay. So I'm going to go with the bingo again. If it's working, oh, maybe it's not working. Maybe you can just check that I've got uh, the bot is up and running. The bot is not up and running. That's no good. Um, Yes, exactly. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, that's no good.
For some reason, be right back. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Let's see if that works. It's really quite bizarre. No, okay. Um, I'm not going to be able to 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 choose people randomly easily. I it was working for some reason. It's not now. Um, so what I was going to do is, and let me. Uh, let me just look at the list of people. I should have uploaded you into my uh, my Android app. Um, so let's 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 go with Naz. Naz, why why do you think um, why do you think it might be useful to have a an an after keyword, right? This one here. Why do you think it might be useful to have a delay in there? Unsure? Okay. Uh, how about... Uh, wait, do you have any, any thoughts on why it might be useful to have a delay in there? Wait. Oh, just having the keyword exist. I, not specifically about this particular example, but uh, why it might be nice to have a, the ability to delay signals. Okay, I cannot hear anything. I don't know whether that's everybody or just me. Yeah, no, sorry, Way, I can't hear anything. Um, I thought I checked my... Yeah. No, I can't hear you. Oh, you can hear. I think it's my end. Yeah. Oh, I had this problem last time, and I thought I checked it this morning when I came on. Um, let me just check my Discord preferences again, in case they change between when I check them. Way, can you try some, saying something now? Yeah, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Let me just swap it back to the headphone. Try again. No, for some reason. Ah, I wish. I'm wondering if it's got something to do with Streamlabs. Let me just um, check the sounds there. Sorry about this. I really should uh, get this figured out. But I thought I checked it earlier. That all looks okay. Let me just put you on um, the what it was doing before, which is the um, where was that? That was in Discord. And let me just put you on the the speaker, which does seem to work. Try again. Can you hear me now? Nope. Okay, try now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, go oh. ahead. Uh, uh, I wasn't sure, so... Yeah, you're not sure? Yeah, I'm not sure. 
not sure. Okay. Okay. Is my volume too low? Or? Yeah. So my, my problem is uh, my hearing is so bad. Um, I can hear you, but I, I really need to cut my ears to, uh, to hear it properly. I wish I could figure out. Let me just um, try one thing. Let's see if starting that up works. Yeah, okay, let me um, try that. Yeah, I, but my problem is I've got too many mixer volume things, so. Uh, Okay, sorry about that. Let me um, forget that, and uh, I will. I'll just try and uh, move on. So, um, so the question is, what is um, we got something not right? Okay, let's try that now. There we go, that's better. So the question is, what is what does this do? Well, um, what happens, right, is just say we have an input and, well, maybe two inputs, right? And for whatever reason, we have Um, a variety of devices that they those inputs go through and let's put another inverter there right each of these devices right, has what's called a propagation delay. And that happens um, in FPGAs, it also happens in discrete logic, right? So, if we put an input here and get an output here, right, the delay between, let's call this A, this B, and this X. The B to X delay, and I'm going to say, um, let's call this uh, alpha, this Y here alpha, this Y here beta, and this Y here gamma. B to X delay is one propagation delay, right? But the A, oh, let's, let's look at the other B one. The B through beta through gamma to X is one, two, 
three propagation delays. And then the A through alpha beta gamma x is four. And the, the problem with those varying propagation delays between the inputs and the output is that instantaneously, and probably not with this simple circuit, but instantaneously it's possible for x to have an incorrect value on the output based on what we know the inputs are at the same time. The key point there is at the same time, right? Because of this delay, um, uh, we, we, we're not guaranteed that what's coming out here is uh, correctly reflecting the inputs. So what you can do right, is use this after statement to delay things. So what we could do here is we could put a delay of um, three in here so that the B to X delay is now four. In this other one, we could put a, a single propagation delay so that the propagation delay is now four. Ooh. Let me, uh, That's interesting. Why was I getting sound out there? That's all just too confusing. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, la, 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 la. Where are we? Should be all right. So that that's why you, you use an after statement. Okay, that's the, the point that it helps you equalize delays through the circuit. And one of the things we're going to look at later on is um, uh, uh, glitches. In particular, I'm not quite sure but I'm pretty sure what we'll find when we simulate the um, uh, the four bit adder that we're designing in lab four we'll find that there might be some glitches and uh, I'll if there aren't um, I'll give you a circuit that has glitches and then we'll we'll figure out how to fix it but the the main reason you look at fix or the main way you look at fixing it is by equalizing propagation delays through your through your circuit and one way to do that is using the after statement so i went down a rabbit hole right the 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 the, the stuff i was supposed to be talking about right is constants and um, we talked about generic as a keyword and we talked about uh, constant as the, the keyword. There's not a lot of difference between them. This one, the scope is a bit bigger. Generic is usable in all um, subsequent places, whereas the constant defined in an architecture can only be used in that architecture. The other 
Sorry, I'm going to have to cough again. Okay, let me just see if there's, um, no, so there's more, there's no more. So that, that's one aspect of VHDL that we haven't looked at before, the, the constants versus generics. Okay, um, we've sort of touched on this one before, signals, right? And the, the way we, we touched upon it was, um, if you recall, we had um, a device that had two inputs and an output, and we wanted to connect that device up to another device, which maybe had other inputs, right? And the key piece is sometimes we need to define a variable that uh, captures the value of that of that connection and there's the the definition right and let me just see if i can find the uh the page in the uh the vhdl slides for signal where they talk about signal That. That's on page, page 59. So let me go back to the, uh, the VHDL notes and we want to scroll forward to page 59. That talks about concurrent signals, but I, I need to you know why it's afterwards. Here we go. Right, so when we want to connect items in an architecture, we, we need signals to do that. Right, and here's, here's an architecture, and we've got an internal signal connecting the output of the exclusive OR gate to the input of the, the standard OR gate. Okay, and here's, um, here's the syntax, keyword is signal, then the name, and then the type, and you saw that in the, in the test bench. Right, so here's, a, uh, here's an architecture, and we define a signal called node one and the idea is we want to um, capture the value of the output of the exclusive OR gate in uh, node one. In this case we, we already have a previous definition of exclusive OR a two input exclusive OR gate. So we make a, a component declaration for exclusive OR. And now we're doing a, an entity declaration for the uh, inclusive OR gate. And then I think we may have to scroll past some of this stuff. Yeah, there we go. Right, so we've got our signal, our node one, and we create an instance of the exclusive or the two input exclusive or, 
and then we need to do a, a port map between the inputs and the outputs on the exclusive OR gate and things that are happening within our within our device. In particular, we're taking the output of the exclusive OR, right? This these three in one, in two, and out one are all defined um, in the component um, in the component declaration. Right, so that's where they are up there. And then these ones are signals defined elsewhere. In particular, the one I'm interested in right now is node one and that's that's where we've defined it up there. So that's like a a, a temporary variable or a storage variable. And then the the reason we need it is we need to put it on the input of the OR gate and we do that in the port map for the instance of the OR gate, right? There's a there's another instance, there's the name of the entity that we're we're creating or we're instantiating. Um, there's the uh, definition of the entity, right? Those three things are defined in the, uh, let's go around this way, right? In the component definition, in the port definition for the component. <clears throat> and uh, I think, Right, so um, there should be a, uh, we should know where A and B comes from. A and B came from, there should be an entity declaration somewhere. Do we have an entity? There's the entity declaration, right? There's the entity declaration. So the missing pieces of our puzzle lower down are A, B, C, and X. So that's that's coming. What's coming into our our top level, right? What's coming in or going out of our our top level entity. So that's why wherever it got to. Yeah, that's why we've got. Let me use a different color. We've got A, B, C, and X. Um, so the A, B, C, and X are connecting up the external inputs and output into our architecture. And the node one is just a, if you like, a carrier. It's taking an internal number from one device, one internal device, and taking it to the input of a, another internal device. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions about what I've what I've just talked about. I think it's, it's um, the reason I'm doing this is I'd like to have examples of um, code in order to talk about new pieces of the VHDL language, right? Um, I should say VHD language, otherwise it's VHD language language. Anyway, um, so any any questions any concerns thoughts um you might have to type it otherwise i won't hear it i don't know why i'm uh
don't know why I have problems um, hearing. It was fine yesterday. I was talking to uh, various teams and various people yesterday on Discord and it all worked swimmingly. I, I'm suspecting it's an interaction between um, Discord and Streamlabs. I may, not, may have not set up Streamlabs properly. Okay, if there's no questions, um, I'm going to continue talking about this, but before we do that, I'm going to have a break. And we're all going to have a break. Okay, because I've been talking for a little over an hour. Um, let's take a 10 minute break. And uh, I will be back in about 10 minutes. I'm going to go on mute and uh, I will kill my um, mini me as well so that uh, my so that my webcam is uh, is not showing.
Okay, and we should be back. Um, just bear in mind I still can't hear. I did debug the, uh, I think, the issue with the bot, but I couldn't quite get to the hand, my, uh, my head around what's happening with the audio, so, um, um, right, so, uh, oh, we've got two bingos, that's interesting, means I've got two bots running, let's just check. Yes, I do have two bots running. Let's kill one of those. There we go. Now we should... Uh... No. Quite sure why there are so many bots running. That's no good. Okay, at least I can choose some people anyway. Okay, so um, here we are, going continuing to go through the test bench, right? Um, as I said, the test bench gets automatically generated, right? That's what the template writer does. So these signals here were automatically generated and the reason they were automatically generated was because the thing we said we wanted to test was this component, right? This is a declaration of um, the, what's sometimes called the unit under test or sometimes the device under test, right? And this port statement should come straight from the entity declaration on the device that we're doing, right? This um, file, this VHDL file is a different file from the one where the, the entity is and architecture of the unit under test are declared, but in order for us to use that entity under test, we have to know its port declaration. And we tell this file, this test bench about that port declaration by um, this component statement. The test bench knows that we want to connect up test signals and te check the outputs of the uh, IO on the unit under test. So it automatically creates a signal for every input and for every output on the unit under test. Okay, and we and we saw what what signals were earlier. Right? And now um, this is the the right the this architecture has various pieces and let me just use a different color from everything. Let's go with purple, right? This architecture has stuff defined that it's going to use before we actually define the architecture. Down here, is where at that big at that begin is where we start to define the architecture and the architecture has a um, has to declare an instance and that's why it's called i1 it's an instance sometimes it might be better to call this uut the unit under test this is the 
the thing we're going to test. That's the name of the entity. And we need to do a port mapping from the entity connections to the signals, right? And even though you can't tell the difference between A, B, C and S on this side and A, B, C on S on this side, I believe these are the entity port, uh, uh, the, the ports on the entity. So this is the entity side and these are the signals in the current uh, test bench architecture. Okay, so you, this is the, if you like, this is the wiring so that we can get access to those um, uh, inputs and outputs for use elsewhere. And the reason we want to use them elsewhere is, uh, sorry, is so that um, we can test them. We can change the inputs uh, and then check that the outputs match what we expect our design to do. I'm just going to take another swig of coffee. Okay. So let's continue on. And the next piece is this process. So I'm going to just do a quickly go to the VHDL notes and have a look for where they talk about process. Let's start at the beginning maybe. There we go, processes, and it's on page 67. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's go back here and let's have a look for behavioral design processes. There we go. So you'll remember, I hope, that if we have statements like this, um, in fact, I should have made that, uh, let me just erase that piece and let's say that's or. Okay. If we have statements like this in an architecture, these statements execute simultaneously, right? Because they, they're just compiled straight to silicon Um, there is no ordering of what's happening. So just because I've written them in that order, it doesn't, it doesn't mean a thing in a, a bare architecture. It's just saying that that's the connections. This is the, it's just, one way to think about this is, this is the wiring, right? Because it is effectively a wiring it up. And once you've wired it up, there's, there's no sequential execution when, you, um, when you're getting a, an electric circuit to work, right? It's all happening at the same time. Sometimes, particularly with uh, state machines, you actually do want to sequence operations. And the way you sequence operations is with the process statement. Right? And the syntax is there's a name that you define, 
the, the keyword process and then optionally in parentheses the sensitivity list then there's some declarations and there's a begin then there's the statements that execute in sequence and then there's an end to uh, end the process okay so let's just see what they say about that so <clears throat> the um, as it says there right you normal systems things that happen in the real world um, they start on certain conditions and they stop on certain conditions so to help us do that we need to be able to start and stop a process so let's have a look at what they say about starting a process and this is about uh, how um, right so in this is just what I said earlier um, these statements these sequential statements um, one two and three they all happen in that sequence so statement one happens first then statement two happens then statement three happens and uh, that's a that's sequential they're not the opposite of sequential is concurrent and what was happening before with the assignment I talked about when we started was um, concurrent concurrency okay so how do we start and stop a process well it's to do with that sensitivity list and the 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 thing inside the sensitivity statement is the name of a signal either one we've declared internally or one of the external signals the inputs or the outputs and what that does is it says if this signal changes then execute this process right and in this case this is a um, uh, looks like a, a delay flip-flop right so when the process clock changes sorry when the the signal clock changes um, the value of D will be sent to the uh, Q output right? in this case this is a little this isn't quite what we want I don't think because remember a clock looks like this right and this process will execute on every change of value of clock right so it'll execute here it'll execute here it'll execute here so rather than being executing on a negative or a positive transition it's executing on both so both on both positive and negative going transitions um, as it says the the process is only executed once it doesn't it doesn't keep doing it um, there are ways to get it to keep doing stuff but generally you don't want that to happen so as soon as that clock changes D gets sent to Q and then we're done and then the the other key word of interest um, is uh, the weight statement and 
um, and the weight is used to stop a process. Okay, if you have um, and the if you have a weight statement within your um, process. Uh, you don't use a sensitivity list, right? So back up here, because we've got a sensitivity list in this example, we couldn't use a weight statement here. Because that, that, that would be, the reason is because that would be conflicting aims, right? Because we've got the, the clock in the sensitivity list, that's saying we always want to execute this um, if clock changes. But the wait statement is saying, uh, I want this to stop after it's, it's been executed once. All right, so they're two conflicting things, so you, you don't want that, that conflict. All right, so in this example here, and I probably should have moved those lines. In this example here, let me draw on it. In this example, there's no sensitivity list and there's no weight statement. So this process executes and loops forever. There's no start or stop. Um, this process has a weight statement. There's no sensitivity list. So um, uh, the statement one and statement two will be executed and then it'll stop because we're done. Okay, so the way that the, the reason you would perhaps use this sort of statement is maybe in initialization. Right, you want, if, you, if you're starting up and you've got lots of signals in your design and you want to, uh, to make sure that all of those signals have correct initial values, then perhaps you would, you would create a process like this with just a wait statement at the end that initializes all those values to the, 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 the one that you want. And so sometimes we want to have a conditional operator associated with the wait statement. Otherwise, the process stops, and once it's started, uh, once it's stopped, it'll never start again. Right, and here are some of the, the, the conditionals that you can add, right? You can say, wait for 10 nanoseconds. And funnily enough, that will just sit there doing nothing for 10 nanoseconds and then continue. Or you can say, wait until um, clock equals one and that'll delay execution of anything following the wait statement or um, it'll delay re-execution of the process until the condition is true. So clock equals one, data is greater than 16, what have you. And Okay, so here are some rules of a process. Signals cannot be declared inside of a process. You have to have them declared outside the process. If you make assignments inside the process, the signals um, don't update until the process suspends. 
Okay? So the example here is if initially A was 2 and B was 2, and then A changes to 7, both A and B are in the sensitivity list. So A has changed from 2 to 7. So then the, uh, the, the process says, well, we set A to 0, we set B to 0, and then we set um, Y to be A plus B. The catch is that this A plus B down here is now 7 plus 2, right? It's not 0 plus 0, or 7 plus 0. Because A and B are not going to be updated until the end of the process. Okay, so, but what if we want that to happen? What, what if we do want Y to be equal to the sum of some signals value that we've assigned within the process? That sounds like a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Having this code execute sequentially and then not work the way we expect it to work if we put that code into a C program or a Python program or something like that, that, that makes sense. So what we do is we need a variable. Now we're at variables. So there's the variable. So even though um, we cannot define a signal within a process, we can define a temporary storage variable, right? So that's now using the keyword variable. Okay, so rather than using A or whatever it was that we had in the previous one, right, we wanted to add 1 to A, and we wanted to set A to 2. Um, we use a variable to get the initial value, and then we add something to that variable. Note the slightly different syntax now once we're using variables. It's a colon equals to do the assignment rather than a less than equals to do the assignment. Okay, so here's the signal and here's the variable, right? Um, um, I have a question. Yeah, what's up? For um, the test bench, don't we use, don't we change the signals and then check what happens to the signals after? Uh, yes, effectively you do. So then, do the signals change in, within the process or not? Um, well, let, let's, let's, let's have a look at that, okay? Yeah, because we do need, we do need to, uh, to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Okay, so um, here's the, uh, I was just con comparing the signal to variable, right? Both of them have a type and a value. Um, signal may also have a time. The assignments are different, right? Signals are declared outside a process. Variables are declared inside of a process. For a signal, the assignment takes place when the process suspends. For a variable, 
the assignment is immediate. The signal always exists. The variable only exists when the process executes. Okay, and that's all we wanted to do. So, um, I didn't see who that was. Was it Yasmin? Was that who was asking the question? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, let's, let's go back and have a look at... Um, at our uh, at our test bench right so based on what we were just talking about um, if signals don't change um, until after the execution of the process, we shouldn't be able to do this, right? However, remember there's a, a disconnect, right, between the entity side of things and the, um, I can't write, that should have said signal. Right? And just to add to the confusion, we have um, the same name on either side. So I suspect what's happening is these are not the signals. I suspect they're the um, the ports on the entity, right? Because otherwise um, we'd set them, but they wouldn't actually change until we we uh, we end the process. Okay, so I, I believe that's what's happening. Does that answer the question? Okay, so where are we? We're at about 10.50. So I've gone through that. Um, note, this is a completely blank process. There's no sensitivity list. There's only a weight. And as, it's, as the comment there says, remember double minus signs at the beginning. Um, always indicate the beginning of a comment, right? Code that executes only once. And again, this is straight out of the template writer. Then the, the, the actual test is uh, called always, and it suggests that maybe you can, you can use a, a pros, uh, sorry, a sensitivity list and it suggests that you can declare variables, but it doesn't do that for you. It depend. It'll de really depend on the um, uh, the sort of test you're doing and the unit under test. And then I use the assert keyword. Um, in this case, if the, the Boolean expression that's being asserted is false, then the report will happen. And so I'm using one equals zero, which is obviously always false. I'm just using this as a print statement because I wanted to know that um, the, the test was actually running in the output of, uh, of model sync. And there you can see that, that weight four that we talked about earlier. Right? 
and note that there's different levels of severity. Note, error, and I think there's warning. There might be debug. I've forgotten whether there's debug or not, but there's certainly um, note, error, and warning. And what this is doing is it's setting the inputs A and B right, to all the possible values of the input with A being 0 or 1 and B being 0 or 1. And then it's asserting, it's checking to see that the correct values of the sum of the carry. Remember this, this was for the half adder. And there goes my dog. There's another dog walking past down, um, down the road outside. So uh, she doesn't like it. Okay, any questions? Any questions there so far? <laughs> yes, Daniel. Um, yeah, I don't know whether I've got a... Um, no question, okay. just going to see if I can find um, a couple of videos of her but they're probably a bit too big. Where's she gone? No, I'll see if I can find a picture. Um, yeah, I'll see if I can find a picture later. Oh, there we go, that'll do. She, uh, it's not so bad now, but when it, when the weather's hot, she likes, uh, uh, rolling around in the, um, uh, in the cool grass or the, the dew-laden grass. So that's her having a bit of a, uh, a roll around. Okay. Let me go back to here. So I think um, I think I've said most of what I want to say. There is one more thing I need to talk about before we get into the the lab. And again, I'm going to have um, spend some a bit more time on the lab. And this is still lab four. I think you you're aware I've increase the complexity of the lab. Initially, I was just getting you to implement the four bit, well, the full adder, and then connect those up into a four bit adder subtractor like on the that's on the screen now. Um, but what I wanted you to do in addition to that now is um, create a test bench uh, that tests the, uh, the four bit adder subtractor. Um, I'm not asking you to test it exhaustively, right? What we did back here with the, the half adder is um, we, uh, we tested it exhaustively for every possible um, values for the inputs. We checked that the outputs were correct. If we did the same thing here, right? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inputs. So we could have two to the nine separate um, uh, possibilities, right? And if you know your by binary, right? That's going to be 512 different options. I am going to get you to generate 
for a later lab um, the fully tested version right so it's going to test exhaustively all 512 different options however I'm not going to do that for this lab for this lab I just want you to test about 16 different different values or different combinations of inputs and outputs okay eight where k is a zero and eight where k is a one using the same values of a and b for those those eight the only change between the two will be the value of k whether um, k is a zero or a one okay that's the first bit so the second bit is um, you could do this as a way of setting values for A, right? That's going to set all zeros. Those things inside the single quotes are all zeros, right? But that's a little tedious. What you can do is you can define A as a stidit logic vector. And then maybe three, but maybe we should use a, a, a generic for that. Down to zero. Right. And then what we can do, I believe, and I, I haven't checked my syntax, so I need to make sure. That this is actually correct. But we can do an assignment like that. So all four bits of A get set in one assignment statement instead of having to do four separate assignment statements. OK. Yeah, I've st I don't. I think I've got a problem with permissions because that works perfectly well on another server that I've got, but um, for some reason that queuing the bot should have the right permissions. Um, the fact that it's uh, allowing me to add myself to the queue tells me that it's got some of the right permissions I'm wondering whether I have the right permissions because I know some of those commands require administra administrative permissions and uh, I think that's the problem and I, I haven't checked whether uh, I should have the admin rights I've got the um, uh, I set up the server I think uh, Chris and I are the only two with um, with admin rights on the server, but uh, for some reason, maybe the name is is different. It used to work. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to suggest does well. First of all, does anybody have any questions about what I've talked about so far? Right. Just to. Um, I think you probably saw it before, um, but to do this sort of thing, and I'm not asking you to do this sort of thing yet, right? To do this sort of thing, we need to do a loop. And you can do loops. 
Um, the aim is to spend the next couple of hours after we have a bit of another bit of a break. Tommy, the aim is to um, to work on the test bench while I'm here, so you can ask questions, and uh, we'll uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm not going to talk about looping today. I'm going to leave that until next week. I will continue to use these VHDL notes. And the reason I'm going to do that is so that when I write on them, I know we've, we've looked at them, right? And I'm going to just give, I think we looked at that one. So I'm just going to put a tick there. And I wrote on that one, I wrote on that one. Okay, and then uh, the aim is we should be able to go through all of these, but you've got you've got the notes about VHDL. If there's something you want to look up, just have a search through that PDF file. It's available here in OneNote. It's available in Discord as well in the, uh, I forgot the name of the, the materials, I think it is, channel for 466. And um, yeah, we'll go that. Uh, yes, Daniel, the, the aim is that we start when, so let me just, um, the way I want to work the, the midterm is we'll have, well, you'll have two hours to do the midterm in. And the way we'll do it is we'll start it up. And when we start up the, the Discord session, um, I will get uh, you to go into Blackboard and I will get you to uh, click start the um, uh, start the oral exam, and I should be able to see that you've clicked the start the oral exam in Blackboard. It'll show me a little um, a blue pie chart sort of thing in the submission. It won't show me a submission. It'll just show that you've started it. And then we'll talk, and then you'll have from the time you do that click to the time. Uh, at the end and like I said I'm okay with maybe two hours is too short but you need to 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 have completed everything within that time time window okay okay so let's uh, do the timer thing again I'll go for another 10 minutes if that's all right I wish I could figure out why my computer stops working just on Saturdays um, And uh, so there's the timer. And we'll, um, I'll uh, get rid of the mini me and I'll, uh, I'll be back in about 10 minutes. Testing, test.
Okay, let's uh, get back to it. I'll put the mini me back, maybe. There we go. So, just a reminder here's um, the lab. Right, there's the full adder, there's the 4-bit adder subtractor, and um, I want you to be able to um, generate a test bench and test the 4-bit uh, adder subtractor. Okay, um, I, let me uh, fire up uh, Citrix, if I can remember where that got to. That's right, I need to go to here. I do have a, a local client, but um, I think I need to generate this first. Oh, that's right. They've changed it. They, I was playing with this on uh, Sunday. And uh, they changed it. And not only did they change it, but it didn't work. Um, I emailed help desk and uh, they, they got it working um, the next day on the Monday. But it, I tried it a few times on the Sunday and it wasn't working at all. Okay, so there we are, and what? how do I want to do this? Did I want to... Let's see if I've got access to my... Um, yeah. So I'll go on here. Does this PC have a OneDrive? It doesn't look like it's got a OneDrive. Okay, so I'll just grab a local copy and uh, upload it. Remember, the problem I was having before was um, things were uh, very slow because it was doing the compilation on a network drive. And obviously that wasn't very fast. Whereas if I copy the, uh, the example up. And I don't know whether I had a, um, a version for Lab 4. So I think that's my, um, my Lab 3 version. And let's just maybe paste it there if it'll let me. Okay, so I'm I'm copying the copy on my local hard drive up to the Citrix server just so that I can do the um, the compilation quickly. I think it's significantly faster um, if I do it this way. I then have to remember to pull down the any changes I made from the. The, the Citrix machine down onto my local hard drive if I want to keep them. But uh, that's uh, hopefully okay. And there's quite a few files there, right? If you have a look at the... It's actually not that big a deal in terms of bytes but uh, it certainly seems to take a while. I suspect that's more my... Uh... So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change that to Lab 4 just so that when I copy it down I can, uh, I can do that.
Okay, so let's fire it up and see what we've got. Okay, so here's Quartus. Maybe, it's thinking about it a bit. The Citrix machines are, do seem to me to be a little bit slower than I would expect. Okay, so here's a half adder. And let's, because now we're doing lab four, let's change, um, let's change things around, right? So we want to, uh, the top level entity in lab four is going to be a four bit adder subtractor. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that name and apply it, and there we are. Now we don't have a design entity like that, so what we need to do is uh, new and then select VHDL file and go OK. And then uh, get our, let me just pull up my um, slides on the other screen so I can uh, get some sensible VHDL. So entity 4-bit add a subtractor is, and then end that. But remember, I need to have a port statement here, right? So port, and let's just have a look at the um, the top level entity. Uh, I think I need to do that, and then that, right? So my port statement, I've got four bits of B. 4 bits of A, 1 bit of K, 4 bits of S, and 1 bit of carry out. So I've got two 4 bit vector inputs, one single bit input, one 4 bit vector output, and one single bit output. So I need to define that in my port statement. So let's, uh, I've forgotten whether I need a, a semicolon at the end of that port statement. I think I do. Right, so let's go with, uh, and go back to my cheat sheet. Right, and I want A is an input, and I'm gonna use lowercase, stood it logic vector and I'm going to say 3 down to 0 maybe I should think about using a generic um, that may be the right thing to do but just for now I'm going to cut and paste Right, there's my A input, there's my B input, and then um, let's have a look at, where's it gone? Let's have a look at the logic, right? If K is a one, logic high, then effectively these exclusive OR gates turn into complement or NOT gates on the inputs. If K is logic zero, then these just turn into buffers. They're just a straight through, so B naught. So K, the, the function of the K input is to turn on subtraction. So I'm going to say that that input
is called subtract. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry, I keep forgetting to do that, and I keep forgetting how to do it, so let me, uh, I will get there. Thank you for reminding me. Um, fonts, there we go. I think 18 is usually good enough. Is that, is that better? Good enough? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I keep forgetting about the, uh, the font size. I wish I could, that, that's the problem with the Citrix server, it'll save locally, but every time you, you kick boot up a Citrix server, it starts afresh and it forgets all the other configurations. So uh, I might actually ping, let me do that. I'm going to ping Ken um, to see if we can save the configuration. And particularly font size, but also the uh, the model sim setting. Definitely the model sim setting. You may not want this font size for when you use these, but uh, you probably want the model sim setting to be saved. Okay, so they're the inputs. And then we had uh, an output, which is the sum. Right, and we had a carry out, which is just a logic vector, a student logic, um, not a vector, a student logic bit. Okay, so that's the entity statement, and then I probably want to do an architecture. Um, and I've forgotten again the syntax so let me just go back to my cheat sheet and my cheat sheet is just the 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 notes for today's lecture right so the um that's all I'm looking at to so it's of and then uh, four bit add a subtractor. I'm just going to cut and paste that. And then is, and let's use lowercase. I'll use lowercase for that as well. And then we have uh, all the constants and everything, but I'm just going to go begin. And then I'm going to say end, not nf. And I want end that one. Okay, so let's just um, save that. Copy that again just to make sure I've got it. Save it. And let's see if that gives me any errors. It probably will. I don't know whether I've set everything up correctly. And let me see if I can change. I'm wondering if I needed that last one. Ah, I forgot. I didn't include the IEEE library. That was unfortunate. So let's copy that across from here. And into here. Oops. 
didn't do that. Let's try that again and do the mouse version rather than the keyboard version. Right, let's try again. And I should see if I can change the font there so you can see that a bit better. Again, I'll use 18 point font. That way you can see it a bit better. Okay, and now we're, we're away. Um, not doing anything, but at least it's compiling, right? So that's that piece. Now the other thing we need in here is a full adder, right? And so let's go back here and go file new VHDL file. OK. And let's go um, entity full adder is and again I've forgotten right just end and let's just think about the full adder the full adder port statement has a one input another input a carry in and then we have an output Right, I don't think we need the semicolon at the end there. So there's our, our entity statement. And then our architecture statement. Sorry, I'm... Uh, sorry, I didn't, I, I didn't see uh, Jordan's comment on the, the chat, unfortunately. I uh, have too many screens, but I think I think we're okay with the sizes now. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's see if that all compiles. Uh, sorry. I should say of. The is is part of the entity statement. ladder begin so let's just go back so we just had to end that with the is statement okay so part of the reason I do this coding on the fly is um, to show you the errors that happen and uh, hopefully Oh, and again, we've forgotten the library. So let's copy that over. Uh, 
And there we go. Let's try that again. Okay, and now we're all good. Right, so we've got uh, two devices. What we don't have, if you can see over here, um, this is the, the top level entity. We I was just checking to see that our uh, our files um, were correctly added. And what I'm going to do is remember I started this off with lab three, so I'm just going to remove the 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 um, the test bench from the half adder, and I'm going to remove the half adder dot vht because we're only interested in these two things and their test benches right for now okay so now um and let me just see if i can general fonts let's again make the general fonts there we go so now everything's a little bigger should have done that to start with. Okay, so now remember, I, I want to make a completely new test bench. And I'm wondering if it's going to let me. Because remember, oh, it is set up. Maybe it did remember it. It hasn't remembered it. So remember, we've got to um, find, I think it's under programs, Altera, model sim, window, Win32, ALOEM, right? And we'll select that folder. Now we've got model sim selected. Okay, and now let's go to processing, start, oops, processing, start, start temp, test bench, writer template. Right, and you can see it's created a, um, a new VHT file. And let's just check that it's added that VHT file. It hasn't added that VHT file. Um, but the other thing we want to do is, uh, was it tools, options? No. Is settings, simulation, right? And we want to make sure that's all set up. That's all set up, but we've got the wrong test bench. Right? We've got a half out of test bench, and I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to create a new one. In fact, I'm going to create two new ones. I'm going to I'm going to um, create that one. And let's just let's just use the same um, and let's just call it full ladder. Oops, did I want that? I don't think I wanted that. I think I wanted 
the simulation file which is down here and it looks like I've only created the 4-bit um, tester so let's let's create this test bench for the 4-bit and I'm just going to use the short name 4-bit I'm hoping that's not going to create any issues and I'm going to grab that VHT file okay Oh, I didn't add it. Now I can do it. Okay. Okay, and then um, so that'll let me simulate the um, the four bit one, and I'm selecting the right test bench to to test. And what else do I want to do? Um, I do want to try and test the full adder as well, right? So <coughs> let's just try doing that and create a new, well, that one's already done it. Okay, so it looks like I, I can only have one test bench here. That's, that's a little annoying. Um, let's do the following. Oh, that's okay. So our um, what we've set up is um, sorry, wrong one. This one, the settings on the project, right? We've set up the simulation, and it's going to run our full bit. Uh, now it's worthwhile just hitting run and uh, trying to uh, com compile everything now that you've got the now that the uh, test bench is included uh, somebody's not on mute can you put yourself on mute I can hear myself coming back in the uh there we go Okay, so there's the there's the uh, compilation. It's all happening, and oops, I need to get the VHT file. There it is. Right, that's the old one. That's the new one. And let's just have a look at what that looks like. Right, it's only got by the looks of things a um, a component for the full bit adder subtractor. So we might also want component um, full adder, and let's just. Uh, Let's just go grab the port statement from the full adder. Okay, there's the port statement from the full adder. Now I have a slight problem in that I have duplicate names, right? So I'm just going to see if I can't rename those to uh, let, me, let me make it underscore FA to indicate that these are full adder variables rather than the, the top level entity full bit adder subtractor in. Let's see if that compiles.
Hey, that's looking happy enough. Okay. So now what we can do this template writer, the, the test bench template writer, only generated two processes. It generated an initial and an always. We don't have to only have those two processes in the um, uh, in the system, right? We could perfectly happily uh, have um, more than one um, process for testing. Okay, so what we could do is we could have a process that tests the full adder and we could have a process that tests the, uh, the full bit adder subtractor. So I'm just going to change the name um, of this to UUT full bit, right? And then I'm going to have to do a little bit of chicanery because I need some signals for testing the, the, the full adder as, as well. These ones up here were auto-generated for testing the, uh, testing the full bit adder subtractor, but I also need And I'm going to use a slightly different name, right? FAS instead of FA, just so we know which way around it is. And this is a studded logic. And then we need two for the output. So we need A and B. B. We need a carry in. We need a sum and we need to carry out. So now we've got enough signals to, to capture what's happening with the full adder. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to make a um, another unit under test, right? UUT full adder. And this one is a full adder. And I'm going to have a port map. And now we've got to map the um, AFA to A, uh, what do we call it? FAS, right? And, and all the others. B, F, A, B, F, A, S. C in F A oops to C in F A S uh, S F A to S F A S and C out F A to C out FAS. Okay, I think that's what we need. Let's just see if it compiles. See how bad it is. Yeah, it seems happy enough with my VHDL so far doesn't do much yet, but I'm just setting it up so that we can uh, write a test. Okay, um, Tommy's asking me to slow down. We can we can do that.
Okay, so um, what I'm doing, let me uh, let me go back to do some doing some drawing. Maybe if I can get rid of that, I will kill that and move that one over here. So let's. Uh, that's the wrong one. Let's go back to today's lecture. Right, and so this is the lab. So what I've done so far is uh, I've created the top level entity. And this is the thing that um, the project is all about, right? So that was the uh, four bit add a subtractor and that is in the VHD file right so this is our this is the thing we're implementing uh, then I decided we needed a lower level Okay, so um, I'm, I'm getting there. I just thought I'd I just thought I'd write it out and and explain um, to what what I was why I was doing what I was doing, and I needed I, I need to go back to the beginning in order to to make sure I'm make sure I've got it correct in my head so that I can explain it. Okay, so I I apologise if I've I've gone back too far, but I, I think if I if I do it this way, I'll be able to explain it a little better. Okay, uh, I'll get there, Celine. So let me um, let me just continue with what my train of thought, and then um, I'll try and answer these questions. Okay. So um, I created the top level entity. I then created the uh, uh, the component that we're going to use, which is the full adder, right? And again, um, this is in a, a VH. D for dog file, right? And I haven't actually implemented those yet. I've, I've just put, these are just stubs, right? They, they just got um, the, uh, the outline, if you like. And then what I did is I created the, uh, the, the test bench and let's let's go and let's go back and see what I did to do that right so here's the here's uh, quarters again and what I did is I said processing start and I'm not going to do it because it'll blow away my changes um, and then I said start test bench template right and the one from the second from the bottom on the screen now all right and what that will do is that will create in your project directory so this is where the dot whatever it's called pdf or qpf file is is that what it's called i've forgotten yeah qpf file that this is where your lab 4.qpf file is the project file what i just did under processing start template writer it created a directory simulation model sim and it made this file that was the the name that i gave it to create right four bit adder subtractor dot vht for tommy okay so let's just go back and that created the vht file And let's cross that T as well. Okay, so that, that's what I did then. Now, the problem with that is 
So let's just... Um, all that did is that created a test bench for the top level entity in our project. Right? So it created a test bench for the 4-bit adder subtractor. And I want to try, and again, I'm, maybe it's it, maybe this is confusing the issue. So let me, maybe I should backtrack, but I'll, I'll just explain what I'm trying to show you. Um, I wanted to the test bench to test everything in this project. Not only did I want it to test the four bit adder subtractor. I wanted it to test the full adder as well. Okay, so um, the template writer only created one unit under test, and that unit under test was the full bit adder subtractor. So what I did is I went back in and I created a another unit under test for the full adder. Okay, so far? Um, for the lab, do you want us to test the full adder as well? Um, I think as a bonus, yes, you don't have to. Um, but if you want, uh, bonus marks, then, uh, yeah, so I will add bonus marks for testing the full adder. The, the lab itself only asks for testing the, the, uh, the top level entity, right? The, the four bit adder or subtractor. Okay. And so, so that, that, that's what I was doing. So what I'm going to do is just to, to avoid that confusion, I'm going to leave that in there, but I'm going to comment it out. Right? And the other change I made in here was when you have a unit under test, you need to have a signal associated with all the inputs and outputs of the unit under test. So the other thing I did was I created all of these signals which are mapped one to one to the inputs and the outputs of the unit under test. The, the, uh, the full adder unit under test. Okay, so now I've, I've commented those out. So now let's think about how we want to, um, how we want to test. And we should be able to do something like, right? Um, and let's set, uh, what was it called? Subtract. And then it's usually a good idea to wait for a bit just for the proper to wait for the propagation delay. And then we say uh, um, assert uh, sum, and in this case the sum should be zero. And we need to put the um, the text for the report in double quotes. So error in um, zero case. And we need to give it a severity. And in this case, the severity is error. And the other thing we want to check is the carry out, I think it was called.
and that's just a single bit and I should actually say which part is the error because it's nice to be able to uniquely identify what the, the test thinks was an error otherwise we've got to will I will get confused okay so now let's just uh, see if that compiles I'm always a little bit iffy about compilation when I'm coding on the fly particularly with an audience because uh, I nearly always get it wrong somewhere along the line Okay, so it compiled. So now what we can do is we can try running the simulation, right? And let's see what happens. We have to make sure that the, uh, ooh, that's really tiny, isn't it? I can barely see that from where I am. Let's see if I can make that 18 point. Let's see what that changes. Oh, that's just that. So the footer font, that should be okay. Menu font, let me make the menu font 18 points as well. So you can see what menus I'm choosing. Let's choose the text font to also be 18 points. The tree font, whatever that is, to be 18 points. And the wave font to also be 18 points. This is probably going to look pretty atrocious. And let's make them all 18 just so that Okay, so that's a little better. So now what we've got to do is we've got to check that we had everything we expected under the work setting. And the thing we want to simulate is not the the full bit add a subtractor, but the full bit add a subtractor test bench. Right? That's the thing we're simulating. I usually like to recompile everything just to make sure it's it has compiled and there's a syntax error on line 95 so let's see if we can go to line 95 that's interesting I'm oh let me just go to my uh, VHDL notes and check that I've got um, the right syntax for uh, no nothing there so let's uh, go to Dr. Google It looks like I have to um, use double quotes instead of single quotes. So I don't know why this one didn't barf, 
let's just try it here first back in quarters so I've, I've gone from model sim back into quarters the error was generated in model sim but uh, let's just check that that doesn't generate an error in quarters and that looks happy let's just finish the compilation and then we'll uh, so uh, Tommy and Jordan and Celine I, uh, have I answered your questions or at least lessens the confusion about me chopping and changing stuff in the the template you're all good Okay, so that worked. Okay. And I'm going to reload it because I made a change. Let's just try compiling it again. And this time it just happened and there's no errors. So that was the problem by the looks of things. And then what I can do is I can simulate. And the thing I'm interested in, I'm just going to close that code window. The thing I'm interested in are these signals here, right? These objects. So what I want to do is I want to look at the how these things change in the simulation. So I go add to wave selected signals. And it'll generate a wave for me but I, I usually prefer to have the wave off here and let me just make that full screen remember um, I tend to prefer to change that length to nanoseconds let's just make this a bit bigger right and at the moment we have no data happening and let's just do one step okay so the step of the simulation put zeros on A zeros on B and zeros on subtract so the traces for A, B and subtract are green that means they're a known value but because we actually haven't connected up anything inside the um, the the full bit adder subtractor, the out there is no, nothing, no de clearly defined signal on the output. Okay, so the value on the outputs, the C out and the sum, is U, which means undefined, and the trace is red which is just also indication that it's undefined. Okay, so now let's let's go back to quarters and you can see why because there's absolutely nothing happening in the uh, in the architecture of our full bit added subtractor. So let's first of all set that up. and then set that up right so now at least we should get defined values on the output of our adder subtractor okay so we're just about compiled And now I'm going to go back to the library. I'm going to recompile my full bit adder subtractor. I'm going to recompile my test bench. And I'm going to simulate again. I'm going to kill the existing simulation. And with a bit of 
crashing and banging, I should be able to then re-add to wave selected signals. And I need to go back here, grab that one. So there's my my wave file. Right, and there are my signals. I'm going to change my time step, or run length, I think it's called, to 100 nanoseconds, and I'm just going to hit run. Okay, so now, instead of getting the outputs red, the outputs are green because they're a clearly defined value of 00. zero. Okay, let's go back to the other modern sim. And I'm just going to check Right, this test I believe was run, but um, everything was correct. Right, so now let's let's change it. And let's add one and one. Right, so if we add binary 1 to binary 1, we should get binary 2. And so that's that. Let's recompile in Quartus. Okay, and then we can go over to model sim and back into the library work and recompile everything. Okay, and we can go back and re-simulate the test bench. And a bit of clattering and banging after that. We can add our signals to the wave. We've done that, so we can then go to the wave. And maybe change that. We haven't actually run anything, so all the signals are uncertain. But there's nothing run, so there's no traces. So now we can run the a trace and we get our uh, our values and let's just see what happens back here and what we should have seen let's try that again oh we've got a that's the problem it's not a problem it's we only ran the simulation for a hundred nanoseconds right but the our test bench is now 200 nanoseconds long. Okay, so now if we zoom in on the full thing, here's the first 100 nanoseconds where we had zeros on both A and B, and here's the second 100 nanoseconds where now we've got a one on A and B. And let's just check the print output, right? And it's saying that there was an error in the one plus one case in the sum uh, output. Okay, so now let's go back to quarters and see what we have to do. 
right well we don't have a full adder yet so let's let's have a look at a doing a full adder and I think the full adder just to make clear the uh, the order I'm going to say we're exclusive oaring A and B first and we're exclusive oaring the result with the carry in and that gives us our sum output and then I've forgotten the expression for um, I've forgotten the expression for the um, Where's it going? Uh, there's the full adder. Oops. I need to swish that away before I can see the full adder. Right, so there's my sum bit. It's A exclusive or B. And then the output of that exclusive or with... Um, C in and then I need to and A and B and or that with the exclusive or of A and B and carry. So let's see if I can write that down in um, in VHDL. Right, so there's uh, the first one was we needed to um, A exclusive or B again, right? And then we needed to AND that with C in. And then we needed to OR that with A and B. Let's just see that that compiles. Okay, that's looking happy. So now we should have a fully functional full adder. So now we can go back to our um, half attempt at, at getting a 4-bit adder subtracted to work and let's let's have a look oops I keep forgetting to do that let's have a look at our 4-bit adder subtractor so to do our 4-bit adder subtractor we're going to have to use um, components at least we need four full adder components okay the other thing we need if we can get a draw oh this is in um, PowerPoint let me do it in uh, one note Right, the other thing we need, and I think we saw it last week as well, is we need to capture these things in order to um, uh, propagate the carry. And I'm wondering whether we need to also capture these things in order to do that. Uh, so those things imply that we need signals, right? And these things imply that we need components.
Okay, so let's just um, see if we can go back here. Is that the right place? Well, let's just, I, we should just be able to see it in the test bench example, right? So here is where we define signals inside the architecture statement. And here is where we define components also inside the architecture statement, but before the begin on the architecture statement. Okay, so those those two things I just talked about, the signals and the components, go between the start of the architect the architecture statement itself and the begin statement of the architecture. So let's just have a look at where that is over here. So Basically, in here, I need to define signals and define uh, components. And then we only need one component. We only need the, um, uh, the full adder component. That exclusive OR, we can just get using the XOR keyword in, um, in the HDL. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's see if we can do that. So the heart, the full adder, right? We need the port statement. So let's define the component. I think that's right, is there? Emergency coffee delivery, very good. Um, and let's just have a look at that again. I just want to check the syntax. I do need the semicolon at the end of um, the component statement. And then I need end component semicolon. Okay, so now I've got a component. And now I need, right, so I need to instantiate the components I'm going to use. And I need to map the instantiation of those components to the um, uh, the pieces we have. Okay, so let's let's see how that works. So first of all, let's go back down here. Let's, um, no, wrong one, sorry. Uh, I want one note. I can draw here, but I, I prefer to draw it in the, in the notes here. Um, okay, so let's focus first on this, um, let's call this FA0, right? The first full adder. So let's make that FA0 and where did my cheat sheet go? There it is, but I'll pull it over here so I can have a look at it. Oh, that's one note. I didn't want that. I wanted that over here and I want you to be able to see one note. I just want to flip backwards and forwards between num the notes. And where were we? There. Right. 
right? So we have our, the name of this instance is FA0, and it's of type full adder, and then we need to do the port mappings. Port map, and now we need to map on the one side, A, B, C in, and C out to something. And that something is something in the port statement of the entity, of the, the top level entity. Okay, so let's just go back here. So FA naught has A naught and then B naught exclusive ORD with um, K or subtract, I think we called it. Yeah, we called it subtract. So the way we access that zeroth bit is like that. I think that's what we called them. Yep. And then the carry in on FA naught is just our subtract input. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I forgot. to map S to something. So let's have a look at that. So S is mapped to S out. S on FA naught is mapped to the zeroth bit on the sum output. Now, the carry from FA naught is an internal signal, right? So I haven't defined any signals yet, so I need to do that up here, back up here. So I have signal, and then let's call it C0 to match the, the PowerPoint, and it's just of type studit logic. Right, studit logic is the type of the carry out, and because that's what we're trying, that's the value we're trying to store. So this type has to match this type. And then here we should be able to go C, C naught. And now we've wired up the first full adder component. Let's just see how badly my uh, VHDL syntax has come in. And I'm just going to, I don't know whether I'll um, trust myself pouring the coffee, the emergency coffee into my uh, flask, so I'll just drink it straight out of there. Mm. Okay, so that looks like it's compiled nicely. Um, unfortunately, we haven't done enough to pass our test case, right? So our test case uh, where's it got there? Our test cases um, this one only really um, well, uh, we, we, we will probably pass the zero bit case now, not those ones, but this one here will probably pass that one. Um, we won't pass this one because we haven't connected up the carry out for the top level entity for the four bit, uh, add a subtractor. 
um, and we'll probably fail this because we haven't put out any values for the, the top three bits. Okay, so um, we're going to have to at least connect up something. Uh, and I think as a, where are we? We're at about half past 12. Let, to, to let me bring this to a conclusion within the next half hour, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to connect these two up and uh, set these three outputs to zero, right? It won't be the right thing, but it should at least allow us to test our uh, pass our current list of tests. Okay, so um, I need to get a, a two on the output with two ones, and I need to make sure my carry out is zero both times. So let's go back to my implementation. So in order to do that, I also need I need an another full adder, right? And I'm going to call it. I'm going to call this one FA1. Funnily enough. Okay. So it's FA1 and one one and one. You will notice I've already made an error, right? The error is here. Wish I could type, but it'd be wonderful. And here. Right, going back to our I don't actually connect B0 to B or B1 to B on the full adder. I have to do this. So what I need to do is I need to do yet another signal and let's call this X0 and this call this, let's call this x1. They're only single bits, but let's let's see if we can get those connected up correctly. Okay, so I need a uh, another signal. Another two signals. And remember, this is all happening at once. So I need my x naught to be equal to, what is it? x naught is subtract. Let me just write, we haven't called this k. We've called this subtract. And it needs to be the exclusive OR of subtract and B naught. So X naught is the exclusive OR of subtract and B naught. So then I can correct this error. Oops, this error. And then I also need to do X1, and it's the same thing, but on bit B1. And then I can fix this error here. Okay, 
So now we've got S1, sorry, S0 set. We've got S1 set. We haven't set S2 or 3, and we haven't set C out on um, Yeah, we haven't set C out on the uh, the adder subtractor. Okay, let's see if that compiles. I have a suspicion it won't, but let's just see how it goes. Okay, there we go. What has it got? Uh, Oh, I left out a semicolon. Sorry, a comma, not a semicolon. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, that's looking happier. Okay. So let's... Um, Let's go back into model sim, library, work, recompile everything. Okay, we're all good recompiling. Let's re-simulate the test bench. Yes, I want to kill the previous simulation because it doesn't mean anything anymore. And I'm going to grab those signals, add to wave selected signals. So now I'm going to go to my wave. I wish I could get this to start up so that it's readable. Right, we haven't executed anything yet and my default length is 100 nanoseconds. Okay, so something is still wrong. I do have, let me just uh, zoom into the whole thing. I do have my inputs changing, but I don't have any of my outputs changing, even though I thought I should have had uh, things connected up. So let's just go back and see, oops, not that one, that one. Let's just go back and see what's happening here. Well, one thing we can do is, I'm, I'm not going to do the other two full adders, but one thing we can do is we can set the two higher order bits to something that's non um, that's something that's defined and let's do it to z as zero right and let's just check that that compiles okay that looks good so then over here, we can go back to the library and maybe recompile that. That looks good. Then we can simulate. Oh, maybe that's what I didn't do. I didn't re-simulate it. Maybe I did, okay. Do that. And then add to wave selected signals change i'm going to change that too because we're currently at um the the length of the simulation is 200 nanoseconds so i'm just going to hit it once 
Okay, so let's just have a look at the full list. And now we've got, um, right, our three and two are set correctly. And our, uh, sorry, our, uh, our C out is set correctly. But for some reason, we have undefined outputs on bits 0 and 1. And they're the bits I thought we had connected up correctly. So I'm wondering what I did wrong. So that should make my full adder work correctly. And that should, so that should give me my, uh, hmm, that looks okay to me. And then here we've got our begin, we've got a full adder. And we're mapping A to A naught, B to X naught, C in to subtract, S to S out, and C out to C zero. And here we're mapping those. As far as I can tell, that should be the right mapping. Let me see if I can find... Um, let me just see if I can find something that might help me. If anybody knows what's happening there, um, it looks like it should all. I mean, the the direct assignments down here all worked, but for some reason, my uh, Port map. Well, one thing we could do is we could simplify it and just because those what the actual input and output ports on the device are, are you know, they're not going to change. So we can make it look a little simpler just by doing that. Oh, ooh, ooh. I think I might have a, an inkling of one problem anyway. So right, so we can write that one down, the FA naught one in a single line. And the, the, the ooh ooh is this, right? We're connecting C out or C zero to both 
to two outputs and I'm not quite sure why it's not generating an error for that right so let's go back to our uh, right so we need a C1 on the output of FA1 so that's certainly one thing that may be problematic I don't think it's the reason we're not seeing defined outputs in the simulation but um, it's certainly going to be a problem and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blow that one away because I think that definition is a little simpler and the problem with cutting and pasting is people make cutting and pasting errors all the time so we've got to be careful it's effectively what the problem with the C having that C naught there is okay so now we should be okay let's just see that it compiles okay that looks like it's all good So now go, go back to our library, recompile everything, re-simulate that. Add those selected signals to the wave. There's the wave. I keep making that too short and we're all undefined so far because we haven't uh, actually run any simulation and again I'm going to make that a 200 nanosecond runtime and we've still got problems right our C out and our top two bits are okay but we've still got, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, just to humor me, I'm going to stop model sim completely. I'm just going to go back and have a quick look at the code. So they're the outputs, the last two. And I think that's all we need. Oh. Oh no, we did set subtract, we set A and B. I was wondering if I'd set subtract. If subtract hadn't been set, then we would get an undefined as well. Okay, so I think that's all all right. Let's uh, just hit recompile again. I'm not quite sure why this isn't working. Something, um, there's probably something very stupid that I'm doing at the moment, so... Uh, I apologize if this is confusing but I'm going uh, most of what I'm saying is correct I'm just uh, not quite getting why that map and that map are not happening Okay, let's go tools, run simulation to tool RTL simulation. That should fire up model sim. And we've got an error. 
couldn't find full bit. Hmm. Okay then. Ooh, 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 look at that. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe um, the simulation didn't have the full adder added to it. So maybe that's what the problem was. Okay, so there's a, there's a, a clue. Check that all of the components that you're expecting, all of the entities that you're expecting to be in the design are in the design, right? These are the two things we've designed and this is the test bench. Those three things need to be there. Okay, I'm gonna select all of those and I'm gonna recompile them. And it recompiled without error this time. So that's, that's a plus. And now I'm hoping that when we simulate, and add to wave selected signals, we get something a bit more sensible. So I think based on that, I think what was happening is the simulation didn't have that full ladder added to it for some reason. And it, was, um, it wasn't sh running at all. But let's check that. Okay, so there we go. There we go. Look at that. That's much more like it. Right? So now let's... Uh, right? Uh, it's still not right. Okay? Over here, we don't have any output. Let's just see what the simulation output was. Right? There's, there's still an error in the S1 plus 1 case. Okay, and I wonder what that is. Right, our test in this case has a naught and B naught connected up. We've got a zero in uh, as a one, right? We've got subtract set to zero. And what we should expect out of the summer, the four bit sum, uh, four bit adder, because we've got subtract set to zero, um, is we should find the output the, of that S1, I think it is, S0 being the one to the right of it. We should find that S1 being having a value 1. Right, and that should be set. So now I'm wondering whether I'm, I'm wondering what happened to our full adder. Oh no, well, right, so at our full adder we've got um, A is 1, B is 1, and C in is 0, so 1 exclusive or 1 is 0, exclusive or 0 is total 0, so the sum should be 0. Um, which it is in the first instance, I think. And then we've got one exclusive or one, which is zero, and C in, which is zero, or one and one. So the C out should be one on the first one. So our, our C zero in our um, adder subtractor our intermediate result, right, should be a one. And then our, uh, these ones, A1 should be a zero, 
x1 should be 0 exclusive or 0 should also be 0. So the only thing impacting Ah, there's the problem. Another problem, right? So the whole point, remember, of our C naught is to connect it up to this carry in of FA1. And we didn't, we just connect it up, subtract. So really, what I need there is C naught. Okay, so let's do a build. I'm just going to kill model sim. Okay, and now let's uh, that worked. Let's run the simulation tool, RTL simulation. And let's check we've got all the right components. We have all the right components. We did get another error, and it's probably because I, I named something incorrectly. I will try and debug that. So let me just add a note to try and figure out what that error is. Um, But we can recompile and that all works. Then we simulate the test bench. We grab that. We add those selected signals to the wave. We go to the wave. We grab that. We're all undefined. Let's change that to nanoseconds. And let's change that to 200 run length and then do that no do that okay and now look at that finally our sum is giving us the right answer let's just check the simulation output and there are no errors okay so we haven't finished, but um, we've got two test cases that uh, seem to be doing the right thing, right? The only other test case that I would think about doing for now, and we're going to wrap it up very soon, the only other test case that I would think about doing for now is this one, right? Exactly the same inputs, except we subtract and then we want to make sure that that test case does the right thing. Okay, let's build that. Check that I didn't introduce yet another error. Oh. Excuse me for slurping in your ears. Um, I probably should mute, but uh, oh well. Okay, that's done. Let's kill that again, just because uh, we had that problem with uh, model sim not updating after we've made changes in um, quarters. So kill model sim between times. We do have that error. And like I said, I won't get to the bottom of that now, but I will try and get to the bottom of it. So we do a recompile just to make sure. We simulate the test bench again. We get our... 
uh, we add wave selected signals we fire up the wave change that to run length to 200 nanoseconds for now in fact it should be 300 nanoseconds now should it? so let's make it 400 because it's there were now three test cases in there and there are the values and let's run it okay and let's just fully right so in the second bit our or in this the the third part of our simulation we didn't change the inputs except for the subtract input and our output changed from 0010 to 000 and I think I might have forgotten to change something uh, in the test oh no it's okay right so um, now we're subtracting and we see the right thing so again we've we've added a third test case and it's all working properly any questions yeah one how many test cases would you like to see on the lab because you said there was quite a lot well um remember i i if if you wanted to do so you mentioned loops but you, you weren't going to get to that yeah, we're, you, we're, we're not going to, I don't want you to do loops. Um, I think what I suggested is um, you do a total of uh, something like between 8 and 16 tests and do it sort of like what I've done here, right? Um, do it, uh, the things I want to test are the addition and its subtraction work. Right. So here I've tested um, uh, the zero case. I've tested um, adding one and one and subtracting one from one. I'd suggest adding another, uh, I don't know, another few cases like that. The thing you do want to check though, is you want to test one case where the carry out has to be one, right? So figure out um, what A and B and subtract have to be and find a, an example test case that should generate a carry out from the, the full bit adder of one and see how you go from there. Okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? How come you had to push double quotation around A and not around the subtract? Sorry, could you say that again, please? How come you had to put uh, double quotation around A but not around subtract? How come you've got the, the double quotes around A but well, so the difference between them is um, subtract is a single bit quantity and the standard VHDL with even without the uh, IEEE library um, uses uh, single quotes for single bits. Um, the difference is A and B are vectors and for whatever reason, they've decided that VHDL vectors need to use double quotes rather than single quotes. At least that, that's, that's what I found. I, I found, I think earlier in today's lecture, we tried single quotes around the string of zeros and that wasn't working. So, and well, it, it compiles okay in quarters, but when we moved to model sim, it, it doesn't, model sim didn't like the single quotes around the string of zeros for A and B. And okay. model sim needs that, that double quotes versus uh, quarters, okay? Okay. Anything else? Okay, if that's 
it. I'm going to uh, shut down this. I am going to take a copy of that so that I can um, come back to it maybe next week or if I need to do any debugging with people. But uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, and uh, yeah, main reminder was um, please book your midterms. Um, think of it as a practice. I will only use your midterm result if it improves your overall grade for the course. If it doesn't, I won't. But uh, I suggest you do practice. Do try the midterm format because if you leave it until the final, that may not be the best time to practice. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm not going to close that yet. I need to uh, do, but I will go to stream.